Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Manahawken United Methodist Church. Uh, I'd like to put your attention to the announcements, please. There are scholarship applications available to any graduating um, seniors available in the church office. Ash Wednesday, there will be three opportunities to start your Lenten season. From seven o'clock to eight o'clock a.m., um, the sanctuary will be open for individual prayer, and Pastor Choi will offer the imposition of ashes. From one o'clock to two o'clock, the sanctuary, sanctuary will again be open, and the pastor will be available to, for the imposition of ashes. And at seven o'clock, we are going to have our traditional Ash Wednesday service. So all three times you can come to be able to start Lent. Anniversary Sunday, our church will celebrate its anniversary on Sunday, March 12th with one service at 10 o'clock. Please mark, mark your calendars. Worship will immediately be followed by a church luncheon in Fellowship Hall. Sign-up sheets will be available in the Northex next week. We will need salads and desserts, so please look through your old recipe files and cookbooks. If you'd rather just um, donate, there will be donations available, um, sign-up sheets for donations available too. Buy some candy, support our preschool, and our offering boxes. Still not available, but will be available soon. Are, are there any an announcements from the congregation? Miss Pauline. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have two announcements today on behalf of Audrey um, and myself. A uh, youth group will be meeting this Thursday night from 6.30 to 8 here in our fellowship hall. So all of you youth group kids, make sure you uh, come and join us and you can always bring a friend. And also uh, next Sunday is the Super Bowl. Um, Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R where the youth group will be raising funds to um, bring to the um, St. Stephen's Food Bank. So please come, um, wear your jerseys, and come out and support the youth group, and come out and support Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you. Could I wear my Giants jersey? Yes, because I'm going to wear mine. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements from the congregation? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I just want to bring to attention, and this is something that's dear to my heart, uh, there's a lot of starving people in the, around our country, and our food bank uh, donations have been pretty thin lately. If you could please donate as much as you could, I'd really appreciate it. And if you would look in your um, bulletin for this month, it's soup, stews, and chili. And the donation is downstairs in the narthex. Any others? Okay. Thanks. I do have one. I just want to say, uh, it doesn't look like we have many uh, of the handouts, so maybe uh, if you could recycle the um, bulletin, thank you, um, on your way out. Okay, thank Thanks. you for the 11 o'clock service. Thank you. Yeah. Um, when you go out uh, today after the service in the Narthex, you'll see a Lenten Challenge sign-up sheet. Uh, this is about you know, the season. Uh, Lenten starts on February 22nd, and that's Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And for Lenten season has 40 days. So the challenge is, uh, for the congregation to read through the entire New Testament uh, during the 40 days. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet if you'd like to participate. Again, the challenge starts on uh, February 22nd and ends the day before Easter, which is April the 8th. Now, um, those folks who complete this challenge, you're reading through the entire Bible during those 40 days, and there is an anonymous donor in our congregation who'd like to donate for each of the participants who completed it, the keyword completed it, uh, the $25 ShopRite gift card to the food pantry. 
So if you think it's a good idea, and if you think you can finish reading the entire Bible within those Lenten season, please, what? What's that? The entire Bible. Yeah, no, 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 New Testament. Now, we cal I calculated it's about seven chapters a day. It's about 30 minutes. If you're willing to spend 30 minutes with God's Word every day during the Lenten season, at the end, when you're completed, you tell me. And uh, as I said, uh, one donor would like to donate $25 gift cards to the local food pantry. I think it's a great idea, isn't it? Anyway, so if you'd like to sign up, uh, sign up your name before you go and uh, pick up this reading guide. It tells you day one through day 40 uh, where you need to read, okay, to complete. And uh, we throw in, I threw in three free pass days for you guys to have a little break here and there. But anyway, uh, that's the announcement. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, if you would all rise, if you're able, for the call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. If you would like to remain standing for our first hymn, number 622, verses 1 through 3. Please be seated. Ms. Pauline, it's children's time. Any children? So good to see you, Jack. So nice to see you help Grandpa, too. That's so awesome. Good morning to all my friends. So good to see all of you today. How did, this, how did the choir sound? They sounded pretty good, right? Yeah, great job choir as always. Good morning all my friends in the congregation. So nice to, to see you. Well, today we have um, 
Pastor Choi is gonna talk a little bit his sermon and what my sermon is gonna be about has something to do with our scripture lesson as well, which I believe, Miss Lee, you're reading that, correct? Yes, so she's gonna be reading our scripture lesson. Pastor Choi is gonna be doing our sermon, but I want you to think about something, all of you. Have you thought about what happens if you do something bad that you shouldn't do? Do you think other people know or might know? Yeah, you think they do? And what do you think would happen if someone saw you do something that you shouldn't be doing and they know it's wrong and bad, what do you think they do? I think I heard some. Misty, they would tell someone, right? They would tell someone. Yeah, do you think, do you think that that is, is such a good idea to tell on someone who might be doing something bad or wrong that they shouldn't be doing? No? Why not, Jack? Telling can get you in trouble? Well, well, you know what? Kind of, but you know, this is, this is kind of, you're like on the right track. I wonder if any of you have any idea where we're going today. I want you guys to remember that whenever you do something wrong, okay, and someone is saying to you, don't you do that. I want all of you to point and say, don't you do that, because it's wrong. But you know what? If you look, when you're pointing your finger, and you look, you have one finger that's pointing to you, you have three that are pointing back at you. Try it, look, see? So when you're pointing out someone else's faults and someone else who is wrong, telling them don't do that, you have three fingers here that are pointing to you, telling you about the things that you've also have done wrong, okay? And we have to remember that because we're not perfect, are we? We're not perfect people, right? No, we're not perfect. Everyone does something wrong, okay? So remember, and we're gonna have our little story today. It is about a woman and she wasn't, she was doing things she shouldn't have done. And a lot of people in the crowd said, you know, this woman is being bad and doing things she should not do. And the crime for that particular thing that she was doing was they were going to throw stones at her and hurt her because that was her punishment. They were going to stone her. And Jesus was like, hey, you, what are you going to do to this, this woman? You can't be doing this to this woman. He who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, you got a whole bunch of people standing there with stones and they're going, oh, okay, I guess I can't throw it because I know I have done some bad things myself. And that's the whole point that Jesus was trying to make. So you have your finger as you're pointing out other people's bad problems. Remember, you have three fingers that are looking back at you and saying, hmm, Remember that, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Now, yes, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to remember that. So if you're gonna blame someone else for doing something wrong that they did, you remember that you also do things that you shouldn't be doing. So now I have something for you guys. Here I have a little bag of tricks. Miss Pauline has a bag of tricks. And what do you think I have inside this bag? What do you think we were talking about? What do you think is inside my bag? Ave. What's in my bag? Stones. Very good. See, they knew, Ava. They, they knew, too. I have in here stones, OK? Does this look familiar to anyone? Now we're going to age ourselves. 
Charlie Brown, the great pumpkin Charlie Brown, when he went trick-or-treating and everyone got candy and he said, I got a rock. Okay, so in my bag here, I have stones. I have one for you, and I have one for you. Yeah, you live with me. We have all the stones you can imagine. Here we go. And we have one for you, and I'm going to give one to Ella, too, okay? I know she's not here, but you can give it to her anyway. Do you want to give one to Nina when you see her again? Here, we'll give one to Nina. Okay. We have stones. Now, what I want you to do with these stones, okay? I want you to take them home, and I want you to put them in a place where you see them, okay? And where you can look at them. And I want you to remember that when you see that stone, okay, that if you do something wrong, okay, you have to remember, you can't always go after other people for what they're doing because you have to remember that you might be doing something bad yourself. So I want you to remember that when you see that stone, okay? You think we can do that? All right, does that sound like a plan? For all of you at home, yeah, for all of you at home. Just remember that, okay? That we're, all of us have sinned and none of us are perfect, okay? So when you see that stone, you think that, okay? All right, how about if we get into prayer mode? Close our eyes, bow our heads, and fold our hands. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to gather here one more week with our church family, Manahawkin United Methodist Church. Continue to watch over each and every one of us as we go about our busy week. Continue to watch over our family, our friends, our teachers, our coaches, and everyone else who we love and care for, including our pets. Dear Lord, it's a beautiful day. It's cold, but it's beautiful, and the sun is shining. Another beautiful gift from you. We also want to be reminded of the gift of forgiveness, and we remember that all of us are sinful, and none of us are perfect like your son. Continue to help us walk the path that leads to righteousness. Dear Lord, and thank you so much for all the gifts you have given us today. Amen. Well, thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Thank you, Miss Pauline. Oh, Jack. If you would all join in unison with the opening prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing with the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. It's time for us to share our joys, concerns, and praises. Do we have any joys this morning to begin with? Steve, here. I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of my family uh, in the passing of my mother. Uh, we had her funeral services in York, Pennsylvania this past week, uh, and I felt your presence through your cards and through your prayers and thoughts and through the beautiful flowers that the choir sent uh, on behalf of uh, my mother. It was a beautiful service. She chose all of the scripture and all of the hymns and it was just a perfect send off for her uh, on that day and I really felt your presence and your support while we were there. 
Um, so I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Cheryl here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but today is my granddaughter's 16th birthday. <laughs> Alexa and Brenna. Got <laughs> to get you on that one. You want to sing happy birthday to Alexa and Brenna? Right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alexa. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Yay. That's good. Pauline? Yes, good morning again, everyone. Um, just like to say a little prayer for my granddaughter, Ava. Um, she had kind of like a little tumble and um, hurt her foot. She's in a boot, and we're a little nervous because we have um, dance competition in two weeks. So um, we want to make sure that she's ready for that. She also has sixth grade play in a month. So we want to make sure she's back to normal and healthy and up on her feet again, dancing around. Thanks. Thank you. Any other joys or concerns? OK, Giselle there. I I pray for for my friend. Um, and that's her. That's her. That's her. Me. She need me at school in May. You pray for her. Thank you to pray for her. To pray for to my friend. Um, she's leaving in in May. Her her last day. You pray for her. All right. Thank you. Any others? Okay. And uh, I have one prayer card from Edna. Please pray for my friend Phil Tops. He is passing blood and he is in the hospital. And Phil is a va uh, Vietnam vet with the two purple hearts and he is on dialysis. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, by the way, one of our members, Marion, she had a surgery, back surgery, and uh, she's recovering home. So she thanked everyone for your prayers. Let's bow us and pray. Lord, we are very grateful for the blessings you bestowed upon us. We tend to take them for granted and forget to give thanks back to you, Lord, to the giver of all the blessings. But this morning, we remembered. So, Lord, thank you for being such an awesome and wonderful Heavenly Father to all of us. We give thanks to you and we praise your name amongst us. And the Bible says, you dwell in the praises of your people. Thank you, Lord. And with a grateful heart, we come before you with our prayer concerns. Most of them remain unspoken, but you already know what we need. So, Lord, we lift up some people who need some strength of recovery, such as Phil and uh, other members of our church who need your strength, courage, and comfort, and the assurance that the Lord not only heals, he also gives us strength, he also walks us through together with us, Lord, and he guides us in his truth and in his light. Thank you, Lord. We humbly ask you to send your Holy Spirit to surround them with your presence and with your peace in times of need. And we pray all these things in your son's precious name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture lesson comes from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple area, and all the people were coming to him, and he sat down and began teaching them. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery, And after placing her in the center of the courtyard, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? Now they were saying this to test him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down 
and with his finger wrote on the ground. When they persisted in asking, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now when they heard this, they began leaving, one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone, and the woman where she was, in the center of the courtyard. And straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go, from now on, do not sin any longer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. This morning, our walk with Jesus continues. Today we are still in Jerusalem. If you remember, last Sunday, we visited the Bethesda, you know, the uh, place of healing and God's grace. It was also in Jerusalem. We are in the temple of God this time. The scripture says it's early in the morning, even earlier than 8.30. <laughs> really? No? How do I know? Because the same word for early in Greek used for three women when they visited Jesus' tomb, remember? It was close to dawn, so very early. Anyway, Jesus, the teacher, is seated in the temple court, and all others, like you and me, are listening as they stand around him. He's teaching the word of God. And his teaching is disrupted, however, when a group of men, the scribes and the Pharisees, the scribes were the people they devoted themselves to study and copy down the scrolls, in those days, Torah. So that's all they did. And Pharisees, their religious leaders, they dragged a woman in front of Jesus. And as you could imagine, everything stops. Everyone's eyes are fixed on this woman. An instant court is set up right there. Jesus as the judge, the case, the scribes and Pharisees versus a woman, the church is adultery. That's where we are standing right now. I invite you one more time to go to the bulletin uh, scripture lesson. Follow along, I'm in verse three and four. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery. And after placing her in the center of the courtyard, verse 4, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the very act of committing adultery. This woman, the woman has been caught in committing adultery, one man shouted. Red-handed, uh, another man cried out, pointing her, his finger at her. She was speechless. She has no defender with her either. Now, this is how the devil brings charges against us, folks, in the heavenly court. Toward us, the devil shouts, Geyun Cho, you put your name. He or she is guilty, caught in the very act. Like the woman, we too stand before God, helpless and speechless. Verse 5, now in the law, they continued, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? Now, the, they're referring to the law. In Hebrew word, is called Torah, the first five books in the Old Testament. Okay? And guess what? The accusers, using the very law of God against this woman, stone her, they shout, keep God's law. They demand. 
they were referring to a particular verse in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. I quote, If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer, male, and the adulteress, female, shall surely be put to death. Wait a minute. The law says both male and female. Where is the man? Why only the woman here? When our enemy Satan makes such a scolding and merciless accusation against us in front of God, the judge, crying out, he or she broke the law. He or she deserves to die and be punished. You and I stand guilty as charged. Then they asked Jesus, what then do you say? It's a trap question, have you noticed? If Jesus said, yes, go ahead, go ahead and stone her, then they would have stoned her to death and also accused Jesus of no mercy or grace. If he said, no, don't, then they would have accused him of not keeping the law of Moses. Therefore, he is not from God. A catch 22. What did you do? Verse 6. Now they were saying this to test him so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground something. Did you notice that in verse 6, they were saying it's a continuous action. They kept asking Jesus, what then do you say? Hello, we are waiting repeatedly. But Jesus would not say a word while he's writing something on the ground with his finger. What do you think he was writing? We don't exactly know what he was writing. The scripture doesn't say. Now, some scholars believe that it might have been the Ten Commandments. Other scholars think that he was writing something down, some specific sins of the very accusers. Perhaps, one of them says, he was writing down how God understands adultery. Listen to what Jesus says about adultery in Matthew 5. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Ouch, isn't it? I bet all these accusers were guilty of that. It's quite alarming. I told you about this. Statistics say that more than half of the people, male in the church, looking at the pornographic images almost every day. You have to know what you are doing in the sight of God. You're committing adultery with that image of woman every time you look at. Perhaps Jesus was writing down other types of sins, such as murder. Once again, let's listen to Jesus in Matthew 5, 22. I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you, good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whosoever says, you, fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Wow. God's word also says everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Whoa, whoa. Now, there may be some folks among the accusers who might have escaped all these charges above. Jesus still says in Mark chapter 7, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. From within, out of the heart of man, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, 
murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Are we still not guilty of any of these sins? One way or another, we find ourselves guilty or we find ourselves sinners. This is what the Bible says about us humans. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all are sinners with no exception. And the accusers in today's story are sinners too. Yet, they seem unaware of this truth and keep pressing on Jesus What do you say? Verses 7 and 8. When they persisted in asking Jesus, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, Jesus stooped down and wrote more on the ground. Here's the killer statement Whosoever is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. I believe only Jesus can come up with such a statement. Verse 9, when they heard this, they began leaving one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone, and the woman where he, she was, in the center of the courtyard. The accusers, convicted in their hearts of their own sins, sheepishly disappeared one by one, beginning with the older ones, until only Jesus and the woman were left. You see, that's what God will do with us in the heavenly court. By the way, 2 Corinthians 5 says this, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, all the wrongs, all the sins we have done will be presented against us and will be found guilty as charged. However, at that very moment, Jesus will come up with a clincher. Father, let them go free, because I have paid the wages of their sins once and for all. I say hallelujah and amen. Do you say that too? Amen? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <Yeah. laughs> Here's the good news. Romans 8.1. For those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Folks, being a Christian is just one of the things that people do know. It's an eternal blessing that you have no condemnation in Christ Jesus. We don't realize how blessed we are now, but we will on that day. Verses 10 and 11, And straightening up again, Jesus said to the woman, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus says, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on. Do not sin any longer. No one should condemn each other. You see, that's God's verdict. God gives no authority to anyone but Christ to condemn anyone. Although Jesus could have condemned her, he chose not to. Likewise, God lavished on us his mercy so that we don't receive what we deserve and we find instead forgiveness in Christ. Thanks be to God. I'm going to talk very briefly about two lessons that we can learn from today's story. The first one is, all have sinned, and the second one is, sin no more. The problem today, I see too many people in the world play God, may I say. They're quick to judge others and condemn them, without mercy at times. I read the one story about uh, this um, court case. Whatever they did, the, um, there is a you know, just a guilty party there, one man. And the family of the other victim said in public, I hope you will burn in hell. When I read that article, I thought, wow, so strong, isn't it? Who could say such a thing? I pray that you eternally burn in hell. 
those things people say. You know, that kind of thing Jesus detests. No one should condemn anyone else. Why? Because only the sinless can judge the sinners. Since we all have sinned, we are automatically disqualified to condemn others. God is the only one who can judge and condemn any soul. No humans, period. Listen one more time. Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Christ alone can judge. The second lesson is this, go from now on sin no more. I believe this is the best part of the story. This is what made me fall in love with Christ all over again. Go in peace, I do not condemn you either. Sin no more. Grace is offered, yet truth is not compromised. I see the divine balance here. Grace is offered to the sinner, yet sin is not condoned either. Forgiveness is granted with no compromise of truth. Remember, Jesus is merciful, yet he does not condone sin. Jesus is full of grace, yet he does not annul God's law. Grace and truth are inseparable. The lesson, you and I, like Christ did, ought to practice the same with each other. Offer God's love, grace, and mercy to the guilty, yet at no expense of the truth. Truth without grace is harsh and judgmental. We all know it creates a rebellious child if you're still raising your children in your home. Grace without truth is not love. It is cheap and uncaring. It creates a spoiled child. As for closing, I would say this. God alone can judge or condemn people. No humans do and should, and all have sinned. We all need the Redeemer. Remember the two sides of the coin, grace and truth and mercy and justice. They always go together. Psalm 105 says, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. When you read, with the read it, with an open eyes. Oh, here's what it says, here's what it says, okay? Practice love in truth and uphold truth in love. That's how God did with us. You know, God upheld the truth that the wages of sin must be paid through death. So what he did, he sent Christ, the sinless, to the cross on behalf of the sinners like you and me. Now because of his sacrifice, God forgives us our sins and he offers salvation through his grace and love. The same Christ says to all this morning, go, your sins are pardoned, but sin no more. To me, that's the core of the gospel, that's the core of our belief and Christianity. Let's bow as and pray. Lord, you never stop amazing us with God's truth, also with God's grace. You are our example to follow. Help us to do as you did with us. Help us to practice Grace in truth and truth with grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Today is the Communion Sunday. At this time, I would like to invite Paul in to come forward to work with me.
by the hand of the Eucharistic ministry, also be blessed with your presence, and with your love, and with your strength. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Let us all rise and sing our closing hymn. Uh, no. Offerings. <laughs> Now we can sing the closing hymn. <laughs> First, yeah. Ever since by faith I saw the stream, I Hey! 
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Amen.